Hello and welcome to North Coders' first fully remote graduation. Given the current circumstances, the students were unable to deliver their presentation live, but the project they've worked on is still no less impressive. I love this project and I hope you will too. Introducing Sprout. Hi, I'm Robin, and today I'm really happy to introduce you to the app myself, Anissa, Connie and Imogen have been working on for the last eight days, Sprout. Sprout's been designed to make identifying, cataloguing, purchasing and caring for plants as simple as possible. You simply take a photo of or search for the plant you want to learn about and all the information is displayed for you in an easy to understand interface. The app is for anyone who wants to take better care of their plants or is simply interested in finding out more about the plants they see around them. I'll hand you over to Imogen who will give you a quick demonstration of what our new user's experience might look like. I'll now take you through a short demonstration of our app so you can see it in action. If you don't have an account yet, click Create New Account and it'll take you through to the sign up page. You can type your username in, your email and your password and confirm your password. And then when you submit that information, it will be sent off to use to Cognito to be entered into the user pool. And now we've submitted it, we've been sent an verification code to our email address by Cognito, so we'll wait for that to for that verification code to come through. We can then verify our email address. So it's come through now and I'm just entering it and submitting the code and that will take us through to the intro carousel which was illustrated by a very talented Connie and it's giving instructions, you can add plants to your garden, add them to your wish list, and you'll win medals if you keep scanning. Now we're going through to the camera page so we can see my plants here. Here's my aloe vera and I'm going to take a snap. And then this photo will be sent through to the plant ID API for identification and then over to our DynamoDB database to obtain the care instructions. And here's a lovely loading GIF illustrated by Connie again. Now it's loaded and we see our aloe vera and we see that we've achieved our first medal for scanning our first plant. If we add it to our garden, get a little alert and we get another medal for adding it to our garden. So now we can continue and take a look at the garden page. And this is just getting all our plants from our user table in DynamoDB. And there we've got our aloe vera and we can see the care instructions represented with icons below the plant. So we've got our pH, our shade. Now we're through to the plant page where we can see the image of our aloe vera. We can scroll through the images to see both the image we took and stock photos from the database. And I can set a watering reminder which triggers a notification on my phone every time my plant needs watering. Now I'm back and I can go through to my account to see my medals and my scanned plants. Now I'm on the My Accounts page where I can see the medals I've won so far. If I click on them, I can see more information. So I've won the Discoverer medal and the Plant Parent medal. Now I can go through to my scanned plants and we get the scanned plants back from DynamoDB. And here I can see all the information about my plant and I can add it to my garden or to my wish list. If I go back to my account, I can see my wish list. I'm gonna give Expo my location and then the Google Maps API will show me where the nearest garden centers to me are. So if I wanna buy another plant, I know where to get one. I'm now going to hand you over to Anissa to show you a bit more of the functionality we have on our app, such as the camera roll function and the search bar function. I'm already an existing registered user, so I'm just going to sign in with my email and password. This uses secure login authentication by Amazon Cognito. My password entry is hidden, so you won't be able to see it. So let's sign in. This will take us to our camera page, but I'd like to see my account first. Wow, I've scanned 147 total plants. Instead of taking a picture this time, I'm going to search for a plant. 
This sends a request to our Treffle API to get plant care instructions. And as you can see, I've received the care instructions and a lovely set of pictures to scroll through. I like this plant, so I'm going to add it to my garden. Now, along with searching, I can also upload a picture. So I'm going to use Expo's Image Picker to choose a picture. This will send its base 64 representation to our Plant Identification API. And again, for this orchid, I've got care instructions. I'm going to add it to my wish list. And as you can see, I've got my updated wish list. To access my nearest garden centres, I'm going to click on this link, which will take me to Google Maps. When a user loads Sprout, Cognito provides a safe, secure login page. When identifying a plant, a user can either upload or take pictures using Expo Camera, which is then passed as the Base64 photo to Plant ID API, an AI which returns its scientific name. If we don't hold that name and corresponding information in our own DynamoDB for plants, we run the scientific name through Treffle API and a utils function to filter out the information we need and calculate care instructions. The plant information is then added to a second DynamoDB for users, and the picture the user took is stored in S3 buckets. Other than JavaScript, everything on our tech stack is completely new to us. We stored user information in DynamoDB, a NoSQL database from AWS. We queried the database using Lambda functions, which we linked up to an API using AWS API Gateway in order to make HTTP requests. We stored each user's plant images in an S3 bucket and retrieved them using keys which we had stored in the user table. I'll now hand over to Robin to talk to you a bit more about DynamoDB and API Gateway. We decided to use DynamoDB to store our user data as it fit well with the other technologies we brought into the app from AWS. We also wanted to challenge ourselves by using a non-relational database, which is something that hadn't been covered in the course. Using Dynamo allowed the app to scale easily with demand and also allowed for easy changes to the structure of data within each user. Using the API gateway provided by AWS alongside DynamoDB meant that we could follow an MVC architectural pattern and its integrated Lambda testing provided us with the tools to check our database was functioning correctly before integrating it with our front end. The main challenge that we faced when using Dynamo was the learning curve getting, getting up to speed and the somewhat lacking clarity in AWS documentation for beginners. I'll pass you back to Imogen, who can tell you a bit more about S3 buckets and how we implemented them. We decided to use an S3 bucket to store user images, as we could request them via an API linked to a Lambda function, like the rest of our backend. The flat data structure made it quick and easy to set up, and we could store large image files no problem thanks to the 5 terabyte limit on storage. An obstacle we faced was the large size of the mobile photos, which breached the size limit on Lambda functions. To resolve this issue, we had to use Lambda to retrieve an authenticated URL with which we could request the photos from S3 directly. This extra step added to the loading time of our scanned plants and garden pages. Given more time, we would have liked to look for a more efficient solution to this issue. To identify the user's plants and provide care information, we used two external APIs, Plant ID and Treffle. We eventually decided to start building up our own database of plant information due to a lack of complete data on Treffle, but we kept the external API functionality in place just in case a plant wasn't in our database. Connie will now tell you a bit more about the external APIs we used. Both APIs have been incredibly beneficial to our projects as they have such extensive libraries and are free to use. However, our dependency on them could be a weakness in our project as we rely heavily on them for large portions of information on plants. We found Treffle to be somewhat unreliable, providing patchy information on some plants, and had one day when the server was completely down. This is why we decided to start building our own DynamoDB and fall back on Treffle in case we didn't have a scanned plant available. The speed of identifying a plant is fairly slow using Treffle and Plant ID, as we are making two separate async API calls, and we also have to run Treffle responses through a utils function to format the data ready to use, which is another pro of using our own DynamoDB, where the information is already correctly formatted. Our front end was built using Expo, React Native, AWS Amplify, and was written in TypeScript. 
We put a lot of thought and time into user experience in our front end, implementing the UX Honeycomb and adding a range of small but important features to make the app both aesthetically pleasing and easy to use. All our graphics are made and animated in Adobe Suite to ensure colour schemes and styling are consistent throughout. We utilise swipe gestures and React Native animations to make flicking between pages more seamless and gamified the app with our medal earning functionality to make it not only useful, but fun and engaging. For user authentication, we used AWS Cognito and Amplify. The benefits of this were that we had access to a wide range of pre-built authentication functionality via Amplify. We were also able to easily add email verification using the Cognito user pool setup. Once a user is added to the user pool, they are then automatically added to our DynamoDB user table via a Lambda function, which triggers on a sign-up event. We wanted to incorporate social authentication using the Facebook SDK, but unfortunately, due to a lack of time and documentation, we were unable to add this. Given more time, this is something we would have liked to have added for an easier user experience. We decided to use TypeScript because it allowed us to debug before compiling our app and we wanted to familiarize ourselves with industry standard. We decided to use React Native because of the wide range of features available on it. Knowing React was helpful in learning React Native, but writing in TypeScript added an extra challenge to an app we had to build in such a short time frame, as we're not taught either React Native or TypeScript on the course. Pairing a tech we didn't know with a language we didn't know meant debugging took twice the time, as in many cases we had to go through the documentation of both to find out where the problem was. React navigation posed new challenges, such as relearning how to pass down props, and some functionality we were used to using was not available or had a much more roundabout way of accessing. For example, React Native does not support GIFs for our loading screen. CSS was also out the window, and we had to learn to style using React Native style sheets, which is much less customizable than React or vanilla JavaScript. We decided to integrate maps to show users the nearest garden centers. This was done using React Native's map view and the Google Maps JavaScript API. Using Expo's geolocation module, we were able to access the current geolocation data from the user's device and Google Places API was used to render markers of the nearest garden centres. Due to time constraints, rather than showing routes within the app, we opted to navigate to the default map apps instead. To simplify developing our React Native app, we made use of Expo SDK which comes with a wide set of different components for native development, like Expo Camera which renders a preview from the camera of your device. Expo Camera was used to take a picture of our plants or upload from Camera Roll using Expo Image Picker, store the image in an S3 bucket and then send its Base64 representation to our Plant Image Recognition API. This API uses machine learning and deep neural networks to identify the plant and return the data. To set up reminders to water our plants, we made use of Expo's notification component to set up local notifications using Expo's server. Creating with Expo, rather than a bare React Native app, meant we were unable to use native libraries which didn't support Expo, and were limited to using Expo's default notification components. However, the range of inbuilt components were perfect for our needs. To complete the app as quickly and efficiently as possible, we adopted a lot of Agile-inspired practices. Before we began any coding, we thoroughly planned and storyboarded the app so that the whole team was on the same page and working towards the same goal. We pair programmed frequently as we found that two heads were often better than one when it came to learning so much in such a short amount of time. Then each day we would have a morning and afternoon stand up to discuss how we were progressing or if there's anything we needed more help with to ensure no team struggled on a single issue for too long. Being flexible in the current environment was also key as we originally used a physical Kanban board that then had to be moved onto Trello once remote working became our only option. And lastly, making sure we had good Git practices was essential once we were out of the office, due to it being much more difficult to look over each other's code during mergers. As for the future of the app, expanding our own Flower Dynamo DB database would leave us unreliant on third-party APIs. Android Camera could also be a good alternative to detect images in real time without relying on network connectivity. 
Pre-rendering information could reduce loading times and bundling startup times, making for a smoother user experience. Along with providing directions to garden centres within our app, providing links to plant sellers using Amazon Marketplace web services or eBay would add to the user experience. An additional feature would be to add light and temperature sensors so users can get personalised care instructions data. Thank you for tuning in with us. We'll be answering your questions in the comment section below.